Our guest on today's show is a man to whom leadership comes naturally. He has led the Royal Oman Air Force as its chief and was awarded the Order of Oman by His Majesty for his services to the nation. In the corporate sector, he has had the distinction of leading multiple large international financial institutions. He is currently the executive chairman of international investment firm InvestCorp and the chairman of Bank Sohar. In addition, he has also found the time to write three books and is a prolific speaker on international affairs. Mr. Mohammad Mahfoud al -Ardi, a very warm welcome to OER Power Talk. Chairman of Bank Sohar in December 2017. What is your vision for the bank and how much of that has been actualized? So our vision for Bank Sohar is to be uh, a leading Omani service company, uh, servicing its customers, its communities and the wider uh, uh, and the wider economy to grow and prosper. We help those constituencies by making banking easy and adapt to their ever-changing uh, world. We have uh, built a very highly skilled team, uh, professionals led by uh, CEO Ahmed Al-Musallami, who is a true leader uh, in, in, in the sector and whose uh, performance has been uh, proven. Uh, the whole organization have a, a renewed uh, energy and can-do attitude uh, across uh, our business uh, businesses. Uh, so, in in short period, we produced leading service standards and good financial performance despite the challenges that are facing the market. We have launched viewpoints, as uh, as you know. We have started uh, and launched Tomohi, uh, uh, which is really a step uh, further from just recruiting our monies, but onboarding uh, twenty. Omani grads who uh, then the program uh, put them on a one year uh, on the job training to help uh, them develop their uh, necessary skills for their uh, career in the financial uh, sector. So uh, I think uh, all in all uh, our businesses are ready to do impressive performance and uh, we are ready to take the bank to the next uh, level. Wonderful to hear that. Uh, Viewpoints Bank Soha's Chairman Forum, this is one of your initiatives, it was launched earlier this year and uh, you invited His Excellency Mohammed Gergavi, uh, who was the Minister of Cabinet and Future from the UAE and you recently invited Sir Jerry Grimstone, who is the Chairman of Standard Life Everdeen as guest. Uh, what is the idea behind Viewpoints and both these, spoke, both, both these speakers spoke about uh, technology and globalization as factors that are going to disrupt the world. What are your thoughts on these two factors? So, uh, so viewpoints. Uh, we launched the viewpoints uh, as you know in our vision to strengthen bank the bank uh, position to support uh, further the economy and its development. It is it is also I think a chance to bridge the young entrepreneurs and the, the aspiring youth. Of, of the Sultan, uh, with those leaders in the world that have success stories to talk about, that have uh, led institutions uh, well. And so we bring them together and uh, the change of ideas and the change of uh, the exchange of ideas and the exchange of uh, uh, ways of doing things is very, very important. Now, as you said, both of uh, those esteemed speakers have talked about digitization uh, and uh, the technology that is disrupting the whole world. And I think uh, it is uh, the way things are and, and it's the way uh, technology is going to, to continue to do. And uh, in our region we have seen it with uh, digital banking, with uh, uh, penetration of more uh, mobile uh, uh, standards and uh, even cryptocurrencies. 
in Bank Sahar, we are uh, we're ready for this. We uh, we spend uh, a lot of training and a lot of uh, uh, expenditure on people, on processes, on systems uh, to really be abreast uh, with this. You touched upon entrepreneurship and uh, creating jobs for Omanis and entrepreneurship and SME development are huge national priorities for the government. Uh, how can these be achieved and what is Bank Sohar doing to, uh, to achieve these goals or help in contributing towards these goals? Well, like I said, I mean, you know, harmonization is very important for us and I think Bank Sohar is one of the leading uh, institutions with harmonization uh, uh, targets across the organization. Uh, like I said, before we went a step further uh, to not only recruit and train Omanis, but actually even when we cannot recruit Omanis because of capacity, we ensure that Tumuhi takes those graduates, uh, put them on a year of uh, on-job training, gives them the necessary skills, jump-start their careers in the financial uh, sector. So that is, I think, uh, a program we are very proud of, and uh, it is something that uh, uh, all institutions should uh, should copy. I think the other thing is we have uh, we have a dedicated team and a dedicated department to uh, help and uh, develop SMEs. And uh, Bank Sahar has uh, you know many stories. I'm proud of them of taking uh, startups to become uh, good uh, good companies. Uh, we look at uh, something uh, in the in the range of 10,000 SMEs uh, and uh, not just by financial help but, but by uh, uh, talking about good governance, talking about uh, uh, management of uh, businesses and that's something we're really uh, proud of. Uh, there are concerns on the other side is that automation and technology and artificial intelligence will lead to a loss of jobs. Uh, do you agree with the sign of reasoning? No, I think, I think uh, if you look at human history, technology has never really lowered employment. It has changed jobs. It has, there has been always uh, great transformation and transition from one way of doing things to another. Uh, but in, in total, I think uh, there would be more jobs and more, more, more employment. What is required is for nations to actually uh, uh, look ahead for this, uh, prepare for it, and, and transition. I mean, look at what happened, for instance, to the disruption to the retail with e-commerce coming online. Uh, those companies who saw it happening and who uh, prepared themselves with uh, digitization and uh, automation, uh, they did well. And those who sat until, uh, you know, uh, things hit them uh, had, had to suffer. And I think uh, this is what we need to do. Uh, and like I said, you know, Bank Sahar is, uh, uh, that's what we do. We, we look at what's coming around the corner and how to anticipate it. Uh, you recently visited Japan and uh, this is something that you mentioned in viewpoints also. Uh, Japan is a country that we don't hear so much about in Oman. Right. Uh, what, is, what are your thoughts on the investment climate in Japan? I mean, Japan is a great country, as you know. It's a great economy. It's the third largest economy in the world. It's a developed, mature. Uh, at the moment, uh, you know, they're getting out of their own crisis that has hit them 20 years ago, which caused a lot of deflation, uh, which uh, affected the way the, uh, uh, they invest, basically. Uh, the Japanese, uh, uh, you know, people are sitting on a lot of cash, sitting in banks, doing uh, not much. And I think now they've come to the realization that uh, to sustain uh, this, to sustain their uh, pensions, to sustain the future, they need to invest with more returns. And uh, it's an opportunity for, for us, for every, for every investment, I think, uh, firm, uh, to see what they can do uh, uh, in Japan, either uh, investing directly in Japan or distribute the one products in, in Japan. The other thing I... Uh, 
I, I think I said is that uh, we see a lot of uh, connection between Japan and the Gulf. Mm -hmm. uh, Japan uh, depends heavily on energy from the Gulf. Uh, have a lot of uh, coordination, cooperation with governments in the GCC uh, on different programs to do with petrochemicals, with uh, renewable energy, with uh, food. And so the, we have a lot of uh, things going on, but you, you're right, you know, the investment uh, community does not seem to know that. Uh, when you look ahead uh, to the few months in 2018 and 2019, uh, how do you foresee uh, economic development going from here? Well, uh, I believe the Omani economy is going to do better next year. Uh, uh, reports say that this year we will close on 2.8% growth. Next year it's expected to be 3.5%. Uh, international organizations uh, believe that uh, Oman production of oil and gas is going to increase. You know, this will uh, increase government export, this will increase government revenues, uh, and allow the continuation of diversification uh, that the government is seriously uh, going after for logistics, tourism, and uh, light manufacturing. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, uh, it's good news, and uh, macroeconomics are. Uh, getting better, which is uh, something that will allow institutions like Bank Soha to, to participate more and, and do, do more. On, on a personal note, um, this is a bit of a personal question, uh, a lot of times we see that businesses are compared to the art of war. Uh, you led the Royal Oman Air Force uh, for, and uh, now with the helm at various large financial institutions. Uh, did the skills acquired in the Air Force or in the military uh, help you uh, lead large organizations in the corporate sector? We, without any doubt, uh, you know, Air Force service gives you skills like clear communication, uh, self-discipline, uh, and leadership. And when you apply this in uh, putting a strategy together, or building a team, or executing, uh, it's an enormous uh, advantage. You know, uh, building leader, your leadership in the military comes very early on, and it's uh, uh, and it is hands-on. Uh, junior officers very uh, normally will be managing and leading 100 to 200 people. Something in the civil uh, sector, whether it is in the public or uh, or the private sector, really unheard of for people in their uh, you know 20s. And uh, so this is, this is a great uh, thing. The other thing, of course, um, leading and managing big institutions, whether they are uh, the Omani Air Force or uh, Bank Sahar or uh, Inviscorp, there are commonality. You know, in each there is a leadership role to play, in each you have competition, in each you have uh, targets to, to meet, and in each you have uh, people uh, that you want to manage, uh, understand, and uh, uh, motivate to to reach their goals. Um, just last question: um, You 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 have your uh, you lead large financial institutions on one side. You also had the time to write three books. You travel extensively. You're a prolific speaker on international affairs. How do you manage your time? And what would your advice be for young Omanis? Well, I think. I think it's all about uh, trying to balance things uh, and trying to be efficient in things. I think what helps me is I don't sit on things. Uh, I try and uh, finish things uh, as they come. Uh, I like to have good people around me because then you can trust them and you can uh, uh, trust them with responsibilities. Uh, they make your life uh, easy. Uh, and in traveling, you know, traveling gives you opportunities. You know, with long hours in airplanes, you can read, you can write, you can prepare for, uh, you know, when you when you land. Uh, so I think, uh, I think, uh, you know, some hard work and uh, a bit of creativity allows us to do a lot more than you know people think uh, they can.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Alahar. It's been a pleasure speaking. Thank you. Thanks.